Welcome back to this special edition of Cattlemen to Cattlemen as we discuss beef on dairy and what it means for beef cattle producers. My understanding is that um, uh, there, there has been a change in value as we discussed on these beef on dairy cross calves versus the, the Holstein or, or Jersey calves traditionally. Uh, Dr. Jim, I mean, what is that value? How does that value compare to native beef calves? Well, if you look at, if you start at the day old and look at the spread at, in price of day olds between a Holstein uh, bull calf and the and the crosses, yes. uh, depending on, of course, you know, many market factors, it can be in the range of two to three hundred dollars per head as a day old. As a day old. As a day old. So it's a reflection of the improved uh, carcass traits, the improved feed efficiency, and the improved gain. Right. You impute all of those together. Right, and it, it produces a pretty significant difference in cost of production and also in, in selling price of the animal. And what about the comparison between that beef on dairy versus a native beef calf? Well, it's it, that I think the, uh, we can look at the, you know, there's some data starting to appear there. Yeah. And if you can believe it at times, right, as this thing evolves, the, those spreads at 400, three and 400 pounds have been remarkably close. Mm. Now, they shouldn't be that close, yeah. but it's just a function of an evolving market where, where you know, I would submit that the B&D calves have been overvalued, right, at various points in time. But, you know, typically that spread um, can, you, you would have better data on that, but looking at it, but I'd say over the last while, that's that 400 pounds is between a 25 and 35 dollars spread. Is that fair? Yeah, that's that's exactly what we were looking at as well. At that four and five weight, you know, maybe 50 dollars a head. Yeah, and so again, you know, my opinion is I still think that's that's uh, too too much too too. It's not enough, actually. The, oh, I see. The, you know, the spread's not not enough. The spread's not but, enough. But you know, yeah. when as people get more experience in feeding the cattle, and yeah. and it's a function of you know we're overvaluing every feeder animal on the planet at this point to in time. To fill some feed yards, right? Yeah, to fill right. a feed yard, yes. So, so it's just a, a relative thing. But there's no question that fundamentally they have more they have more value yeah. than the straight Holstein. Yeah but they should not have as much value as the straight beef cow, beef cow. Yeah. right? I mean, you just, just, they're different animals. Uh, and I'd ask you, Patrick, um, relative to uh, the behavioral change that's created for dairy producers, it's, it's kind of changed their game in terms of how many replacement females are keeping, has it not? It, it's changed the math quite a bit yeah. on the replacement heifer system. And, and especially if you jump back to 2022 and early 2023, when milk margins were struggling, as we said, yeah, that incentive to produce that cross calf, I think resulted in some breeding decisions where they maybe overshot the runway okay. on breeding, adjusting too much of the herd to a beef dairy cross and didn't produce enough replacements. So where we're left today is a replacement heifer shortage on the dairy side. And so ironically, as you look down the road, we may actually tighten up this beef on dairy supply by a small degree as we just try to produce a few more replacements to stabilize that dairy herd. No, to be fair, it's not like the beef on dairy trend is going away, right, right. but could we tighten it up a few, a few head? I think that's probably an expectation that we'd have. Yeah, Ryan, I'm curious, what's different? What are some of the challenges and issues feeding these beef on dairy calves versus the native cattle? Certainly, Kevin, the, uh, you know, when we first started seeing these these beef on dairy crosses hit in in a in the hit the market in the feeder calf market in in a bigger volume setting, I think we we kind of thought well we're, this is a this is a beef animal because it's it's a, maybe a solid cuddler and, and has beef genetics it's a beef on dairy and so maybe that's where our head head went or is it you know it's coming from a dairy origin right from from a dairy or a calf ranch to the feed yard and so. What, what bucket are we going to try to put them in uh, from a cattle feeding perspective? As complex as feed yards can be, we really want to try to keep them as simple as possible. And so when I think we first got started, we're trying to decide, you know, what's going to be the easiest way to start these cattle on feed? What's going to be the best way to acclimate them to a feed yard? How are we going to process them into the system and, and get them, you know, inoculated and, and tagged and everything coming through? And what we quickly found was, it's not going to be that simple. They're going to carve out kind of their own little spot where they need to be in terms of how we how we transition on feed. Um, what what types of methods or or animal handling techniques are going to be best because these animals may never have seen a person on a horse <laughs> try to push them up and down the feed alley and get them from a processing barn to a home pen. And so it's been a little bit different. Um, 
approach. And, and if you're a feed yard that's maybe fed a lot of dairy animals already, then it's probably an easier transition for you naturally, right? But if you've only had straight native beef cattle in your feed yard and now have a pen of beef on dairy cattle, that's something that maybe you have to have to try to really adjust to, right? Anything you'd add? Dr. Not really. I think he's covered it uh, very yeah. well. I mean, they're you know they just you've created a separate management class within the feed yard, yeah. and over time we you know adapt to you know they're kind of halfway between right characteristics yeah. of the Holstein characteristics yeah. of the beef cattle behaviorally, yeah. right? And and as was mentioned, if you've not fed any Holstein cattle previously and now you're in the B on D thing, then your learning curve is fairly steep, Yeah. <laughs> right? But if you've had Holstein cattle before, then not nearly as bad. Gotcha. Another great discussion. And when we return, we'll continue our discussion of beef on dairy cross cattle and what the broader beef industry can learn from this trend. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Cattle producers across the country work hard to care for their animals and their land. The USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service is there to help. Find out how you can work with NRCS to develop a conservation plan for your operation. Find possible funding resources for implementing conservation practices or get free expert advice on ways to improve your farm or ranch. Visit the website nrcs.usda.gov today. Biosecurity is becoming more and more important in the cattle industry. Proper washout of your trailer after hauling certain classes of cattle, changing classes or going to a different facility is all important. Changing your footwear, making sure that your clothing and your footwear is not contaminating different facilities as well. Using a side-by-side -side or a four-wheeler. All these things, when we go to different yards, different lots, make sure that they come back clean and not spreading disease. BQA, the right way is the only way. The Beef Quality Assurance Program is funded by the Beef Checkoff. 